Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you a 2011 FCS conference preview on the Ohio Valley Conference. We're going to take a look at this conference top to bottom. So let's start with the recruiting trail to see how well these teams recruited this past offseason. Best recruiting class in the OVC. Going with Tennessee State, the Tigers had a solid class. Addressed a lot of needs both offensively and defensively, but the guy that stands out the most is athlete Bernal Brooks out of New Orleans. This guy can play corner, he can also play receiver. What he possesses is great hands and ability to make a big play. So he's going to be a huge asset for the Tigers this season. Some other key recruits in the OVC, starting with Austin P. Quarterback Landon Curtis has a tremendous future ahead of him. A guy that throws well on the run and is also very mobile out the pocket. Outside of his exceptional pass coverage, Trey Thomas is a defensive back that doesn't mind coming up and helping out in the run game. You look at Jacksonville State getting the cornerback and Denzel Bynum 5'11", 160. A guy that's a versatile playmaker and should be the same way for the Gamecocks. Eastern Illinois got themselves probably the best freshman this year. And Reggie Box, a guy that can play receiver, running back, and cornerback, should provide a lot of versatility for the Panthers. Murray State's defensive back Trey Powell is a guy that excels in pass coverage and has tremendous ball skills. You look at Southeast Missouri State, the Red Hawks getting this talented linebacker and Joey Lowman, 6 feet 230, a guy that plays downhill and is an excellent run stuffer. Tennessee Tech's quarterback Steve Wilson, a guy that has a very live arm, deep ball accuracy is what impresses me the most about him. You look at UT Martin's tailback Lamont McMurray, this guy has blazing speed, great vision, and should be a threat in that Skyhawks backfield. Some Ohio Valley Conference superlatives, starting with the best quarterbacks in the OVC. I'm going with Murray State. The Racers haven't had this much excitement in the QB spot since Mike Terry was playing back there, but Casey Brockman is a guy that leads the hatch attack offense and should be a very talented playmaker for the Racers. Best running backs, it's a tie. Jacksonville State gets denied first with their talented tailback Calvin Middleton, but the addition of Washawn Ely out of Georgia should help bolster that ground game. And UT Martin gets a nod as well, so they have a trio of tailbacks that I really like. Jason McNair, Tevin Barksdale, and also DJ McNeil. All guys can really run the football. Best receiving core in the OVC. I'm going with Eastern Illinois. The Panthers have an explosive set of wide receivers led by their number one playmaker, Chris Wright, and his 26 yards a catch. But also Eric Lohr and Kenny Whitaker, guys that are very explosive and can make plays down the field. Best offensive line, I'm going with Murray State. Anytime you have an explosive offense, you have to look at the offensive line, and they paved the way for a lot of yards on the ground. You look at the guys like Radecki, Tomlin, and also Hobson, all guys are very talented. Best defensive line, I'm going with Eastern Kentucky. The Colonels have one of the best defensive fronts, led by their defensive end, Anthony Brown, and Robert Knowles at the defensive end spot. Emory Atigue at the tackle spot gets a lot of pressure, so these guys really cause a lot of havoc for opposing offenses. Best linebacking core. I'm going with Tennessee State. The Tigers have the best linebacker in the country, and Rico Council should be an NFL stud. But you also look at guys like Wilson Robinson on the outside, and Florida transfer John Jones should help take this unit from great to outstanding. Best defensive backs. I'm going with Jacksonville State. You look at their safety, Kejano Harris, a guy that had five interceptions, and cornerback A.J. Davis, very active around the football. Overall, this unit has improved and only allowed 58% of their passes completed. Best special teams, I'm going with Jacksonville State again. You look at the talented return in Allen Bonner, a guy that averages over 25 yards of kickoff return, but punter Cody Blanchard also doubles as a backup quarterback, but he does a great job of booming punts. Offensive MVP, I'm going with Sean Ely of Jacksonville State. With the way he ran the football at Georgia, there's no reason why he shouldn't do the same at Jacksonville State. This guy is going to easily topple with 1,200 yards. Defensive MVP, I'm going with Murray State's cornerback, Dontrell Johnson. Eight pass breakups, two interceptions, but this guy is also a very talented tackler and should be a reason why the Murray State secondary should be one of the most improved. Freshman of the year, I'm going with Eastern Illinois' athlete, Reggie Boxer, you see right here what jumps out on film is his explosiveness. This guy can do it out of the backfield. He can do it in the return game. So you're going to see him lined up all over the football field, whether he plays wide receiver, tailback, or DB. He's going to help bring firepower to that Panthers offense or defense. Best pro prospect, I'm going with two guys. Wide receiver Tim Benford out of Tennessee Tech makes the difficult catch look routine and is a very explosive playmaker with 18 yards of catch and 10 touchdowns. And linebacker Rico 
Council is the stud in the middle, a guy that has great reading recognition skills and should make an NFL team very happy. Team on the rise in the Ohio Valley Conference. I'm picking Eastern Kentucky. These guys are headed in the right direction. I like what Coach Dean Hood has done with this program. They're bringing in solid recruits. They're very solid defensively and offensively as they continue to make their way. This is going to be a team that's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the near future. Toughest schedule in the OVC. You have to look at Eastern Illinois. And we always talk about the road games. They have some tough ones. Northwestern, Jacksonville State, Murray State, and also Southern Illinois. But you look at in between it, they open up the season against a very explosive offense in Illinois State. Not a good thing for a team that's rebuilding defensively. Prediction time in the OVC. Starting at number nine with Austin P. Reasons for optimism for the Governors, I like tailback Ryan White, very pro productive player, and I also like the offensive line, it's a very veteran group, and defensively the secondary is very solid, best unit on that defense. Causes for concern, I look at the receiving court, they lack playmakers at that spot, and defensively the front seven needs a lot of work. But what we will learn is that Austin P, led by coach Rick Christopher, will have these guys headed in the right direction in the near future if they continue to bring in solid recruits. Next up is Tennessee State. Reasons for optimism. I love the skill positions they have on staff. Tailback Dante Thomas is a big threat waiting to happen out of the backfield. And they have a deep core of wide receivers. And they also have the best linebacking core in the conference. Causes for concern. The schedule. They're going to spend a lot of time away from Nashville with the middle part of their schedule. Can they win on the road? That's the biggest question. And can quarterback Jerry Perry, Jeremy Perry continue to improve? But what we will learn is that with this talented recruiting class and the talent they already have on the roster, Tennessee State is a team you want to keep an eye on for 2011. I have the Red Hawks finishing 7th, reasons for optimism, as long as quarterback Matt Shebo is out there, they're going to have a chance to win the ball game because this guy can do it on the ground and also can do it in the air. And you also have to like the fact that they played a lot of young guys last year, so this should be helpful this season as they lost a lot of players. Causes for concern, they were depleted offensively, especially in the backfield, they lost the best running back in the country in Henry Harris, and defensively they lost a lot of key playmakers. But what we will learn is that Southeast Missouri State may have a down year this season, but 2012's look very promising. Next up is Eastern Illinois. Reasons for optimism. Quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo should have an outstanding season with the return of all his talented playmakers at the wideout position. And also, I gotta like their secondary. They're very talented, even though the numbers might not indicate. Causes for concern. We've already talked about the toughest schedule. And defensively, they gave up five yards of carry, so that run defense has to improve. But what we'll learn is that Eastern Illinois is still armed with enough playmakers to cause some ruckus in the OVC. Next up is Eastern Kentucky. Reasons for optimism. Nine starters returned off an of offense that was very explosive. So look for them to take the next progression this season, especially with wide receiver Orlandis Harris. And defensively, I like the activity at the defensive line. They're very stout against the run, and they can also bring pressure to the, on the quarterback. Causes for concern. I have questions about quarterback TJ Pryor. Can he take the next step as a passer and help this offense really elevate? And defensively, can the secondary really improve? But what we'll learn is that Eastern Kentucky has enough havoc on the defensive line and enough playmakers offensively to cause some problems in this conference and probably be a dark horse candidate to win it outright. Next up is Tennessee Tech. Reasons for optimism. I like quarterback Trey Lamb's progression. He's going to take the next step this season and probably make all conference, especially when you have wide receiver Tim Benford stretching the defense like he does. And defensively, they have a lot of activity going on. They have a lot of playmakers. Nine starters return, so look for them to take the next step. Calls for concern. Can they replace tailback Jock Crawford? And can they get more production out that defensive line? Can they rush the passer? But what we'll learn is that Tennessee Tech has the schedule and the playmakers to make some serious push for a playoff berth. At number three, I'm going with the Gamecocks. Reasons for optimism. You have to love the talent overall in this roster, especially in the backfield. Those two talented guys right there. But quarterback Marcus Ivory is going to take the next step. Very solid passer. Causes for concern. The wide receiving core. Who's going to step up and be the big playmakers on the flanks? And defensively, can they really shut it down like they did two years ago? But what we will learn is that Jacksonville State has the talent and the coaching to perhaps win this conference outright if they are able to focus for all 11 games. Next up is UT Martin. Reasons for optimism. I like the Skyhawks' depth. They have a well-balanced roster. The running game is very solid. We talked about those trio of tailbacks. And also the receiving core is very underrated, led by wide receiver Steven Scheiber and his 17 yards of catch. Defensively, they're very stout, stopping to run 3.9 yards of carry. And the secondary is vastly improved and should get better this season. Causes for concern. Quarterback Derek Carr. Can he take the next step in his progression? Can he stop with the interceptions? And the offensive line, can he recover from the losses they had uh, last season but what we'll learn is that UT Martin will make the playoffs this year and won't be one and done.
at number one, I have Murray State. Reasons for optimism, the explosiveness of that offense. They can score points in bunches and should be a force to be reckoned with all season, especially on the ground with Mike Harrison in the air. Despite losing their three of the top four wide receivers, Arthur Beckett is a guy that's ready to be a breakout star. Causes for concern defensively. They gave up 30 points a game last season, 4.8 yards on the ground. Have they really improved? But what we'll learn is that second year in the system of Chris Hatcher's coaching regime should prove to be a highly successful one and a championship one for the Racers. For more FCS conference previews, visit footballgameplan.com slash FCS or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan. And listen to the Football Game Plan radio show, which airs Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time at blogtalkradio.com slash footballgameplan.